Hi guys, it's Picasso here. Today I have a very, 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 very fun video of how I use Adobe Dimensions and Photoshop to create this very cool futuristic type of photograph, I would say. Um, before I even get started, thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers. It just, it means the whole world to just create these types of videos for you guys and have you watch them and enjoy them. Thank you so much. More is definitely on the way. I am starting photo shoots again and I'm continuing my 365 day art challenge. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Picasso, um, you already know what's going on. <laughs> and if you are LA based, Please uh, let me know if you're a model, if you're creative, I'm looking for new faces to photograph and to work with. So please follow me on that at Picasso. My website is um, Picasso.com. You can check that out. And let's get right to it, guys. First things first, you guys, we're going to open Adobe Dimensions. Um, I absolutely love this app. I just downloaded it and now I'm obsessed. So here I am. I'm going over to the text panel. Um, it starts off with like random text, but you can make it anything you want it to be. I went ahead and did Versace. I wanted to do a little commercial moment. Um, and and Adobe standard materials you can use these are all free these are you can access any of them um, there is glass there's glowing there's matte and so many more I had trouble picking which one I wanted to use um, but metal is mostly my favorite just because it has a beautiful white to black gradient and the cool um, lighting that comes with it. Glass is also pretty fun, but it doesn't really create that interesting light catch effect that I want to do for this type of project. So when exporting, you choose export um, selected models. We're going ahead and format it to GLTF. Um, since we are going to import this 3D file over to Photoshop. So after that's done, export it. It's going to be on your desktop. I mean, mine is always on my desktop because um, I'm super lazy. So I am just going to over to Photoshop and drag that 3D file over to Adobe Photoshop. So here we are. We have the Versace. Um, and that catch light though, can we take a minute? I also played with the glass. It didn't hit the same as I wanted it to. Um, and the glow effect also, but the metal is absolutely beautiful. Um, I just am obsessed with that material. <laughs> So I'm just going ahead and playing with these pers the perspective of it all here. Um, I'm working with Jay, a beautiful model, you've seen her before. Um, selecting this photograph, I'm going to select her out of the original picture that we did. So here I am. I have another video of how I do my selection, you can link that above. So here we are, um, once we've copied and pasted the photo that we were selecting from, I'm just going to play around with her, play around with the perspective. Um, I decided I wanted another picture in it, so here's another photo of Jay. And again, I'm selecting her out from the original photograph. Make sure that your selections are pretty good because it's all going to tie in together in the final um, picture. So make sure the fingers are all good, the, <laughs> the fingernails, the arms, literally everything. We do not want to go back and forth with the selection tool. <laughs> 
and it's going to take you some time it did for me but um it's fine it's fine it's all gonna come together anyway even if it's a little messy you can just erase it afterwards I mean that's what I did I didn't make a pretty perfect selection so I just did what I could in making it as perfect as possible but it's not gonna turn out that way um so I will be erasing whatever I ended up selecting in the final picture and pasted and again I went back and again I said it's not gonna end up perfect and then I mean like take your time with this it's a little bit it takes some time so be patient <laughs> but make it as best as you possibly can so here we are I copied and pasted um, and again, like I said, mistakes happen, so I'm just going to erase all the little bits and pieces that I had to select out of from the original picture, but I couldn't. So here I am, just, it's a little tedious, but it has to be done. So here I am, just erasing the stuff that I don't want. pieces that I had to erase. Art takes time you guys, art takes time. So here we are. Um, I am playing with the perspective. I wanted to make her look like she was holding a letter or like pushing against a letter. Um, you can go as far as you want with this. Um, I ended up changing this a whole lot so the final photograph does not particularly look like the one I'm showing you and how I did but this is the whole process of how I did it so I decided again to work with another picture of her um, and so we're just creating a bunch of duplicates and um, doppelgangers so here I am selecting her out of the original picture and again I will link you everything that I filmed before um, that I've used the selective tool and a little bit slower so you guys can see the whole process of how I, I select the model from the picture this is a little just a fast walkthrough and here we are, we have another one. <laughs> so just again, I'm playing with the shapes, playing with perspective, having her sit in the S, which is so cool. The best part about creating is just going absolutely crazy. At least for me, because <laughs> Um, I'm still kind of just staying home so and plus I have to create contact content for the 365 challenge anyway so I'm just going a little nuts creating whatever comes to mind this process takes a little bit longer just so it could be just it all tying in together so that's the whole process that's the whole point for me so here we are we have another photograph of my beautiful model Jay <laughs> 
and again we are selecting those fingers and fingernails and hands and all the good stuff out of the original picture make sure you get everything you need out of it if you get a little bit more of what you need that's fine you can just erase it and that's and that's okay but make sure you don't leave any pieces behind because you are gonna go back and forth over and over again until you get those pieces in so take your time with this it's a little bit tedious but the end result is amazing And then we're gonna paste her back into her picture that we're working with. Again, playing with perspective. Make her sit on, on a letter. This one was a little bit hard for me to do since her pose is more like the original picture where she's just like, um, holding on the wall. So again, we have another picture of Jay and we're selecting her out of the picture too. Sorry, Jay. Again, get those fingers, fingernails. I'm, I'm saying that over and over again because that was the hardest thing I had to do. I always kept forgetting a piece and redoing it over and over again. So I'm just reminding you, get those pieces in. We're pasting her back to the Versace and here we are playing again with the whole perspective of things. I had so much fun with this by the way. <laughs> the tedious part was just selecting her out of the original picture but playing around with the perspective of her like interacting with the um, letters was so much fun. And this um, step is going to take you a little bit longer. Um, what I wanted to do, I mean, I tried putting in some shadows of where she was sitting or like her heels or arm placements. I wanted to create some shadows. Um, didn't like how they turned out. And I'm not going to put this in the video just because like the end ending picture didn't have shadows in it. But yeah, I just thought it. I, I wanted more of like a cleaner look, um, even though the shadows do play part. I feel like there's already so much happening. The shadows were kind of distracting in a way, so I just took them out completely. But if you want something more believable, put in, put in some shadows. I mean, like, it's just me being picky, but... Um, I just wanted more of like a cleaner look, more of the like the whole aesthetic of it than to make it believable. I mean like, <laughs> not believable at all, but um, yeah, just have fun with it honestly. There's no right way or wrong way to do this, but um, have fun with it and a good luck because <laughs> it's, it's a tedious process. And so there's this last one that we're working with here. Again, we're going to select our beautiful model J here out of the picture. And so making sure the toes are in, the heels are in, the fingers are in, arms are in. <laughs> and just, again, pulling with perspective. I thought like having her against the A letter 
it was so cool because her leg placement, like the way she was like um, modeling, like her stance was so perfect. Like it matched with like the, the A legs. So I'm like, ooh, okay, this is definitely gonna work out beautifully. And plus like, it looks more of like the centerpiece of the photograph anyway. So it all worked out. And that's the end result, you guys. I had so much fun in creating this. Um, it's one of my favorite photos I've worked on so far for the 365 day challenge. This was day 29, and I can't believe it's been a month of the 365 challenge. Like, I have so much more crazier things to create that I'm just, I'm super excited to see where I can go with this project. Um, yeah, you guys, if you try this out, please let me know. I mean, like, this is a whole, this is a whole thing. This is a whole, you need to take half of your day to create this, but it's fine. Um, please let me know if you try it out. If you do, tag me on Instagram, tag me on Twitter at Picasso, and follow my 365R challenge. It's a blast over there. We're doing, we're doing good so far. And again, thank you guys so, so, so much for 1,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you enough. And our journey from here on out, it's, it's only getting better, I promise. And thank you guys again. <laughs> I'm over here getting emotional. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.